Okay, so we we move on um, swiftly to I think we're going to do question. We'll do sixty one, um, probably all the way to sixty four, maybe even sixty five. Let's go. So <clears throat> we do them in batches again of five. So this is the beginning of absorption costing, and really absorption costing here is asking us to. I mean, it's traditional absorption costing, um, direct absorption costing, pretty much split these um, overheads on the basis of volume. That's traditional absorption costing. So this is a written question. Absorption costing assumes that products consume resources in relation to volume measures. And this is correct. The key the key issue here, which is why we talk about labor or machine hours, the key issue here is that the key driver of why we have overheads is volume. Volume. Um, in terms of when you have different high and low volumes, um, just because the, the truth is that Absorption costing is not really an accurate product cost measurement, ultimately. I mean, absorption costing is your initial start. That's, that's an easy way to, to split things. You could be making one item, and you could have a seriously high supervisory overhead, and you could be making a thousand items, and they're all standardized, and you might only inspect them once, and so very little supervision. And so the overhead of supervision is would be unevenly spread if we looked at volume, right? So no, BEB is not... B is not correct, um, and um, absorption costing prevents product um, cost cross subsidization where cost is uniformly spread amongst multiple users. And this isn't correct as well. Absorption costing provides adequate information about whether existing costs uh, practices receive, uh, reflect the resource consumption of different product lines. No, the key point here is that what we're really talking about here is that we have better methods of really um, allocating costs to those units. Only A is true, where it is in strict relation to volume. Um, now, again, what is true here? Most of the costs in public services are overhead costs. So typically, a lot of service costs, if you like, when we talk about uh, uh, when we're in manufacturing, because again, looking at the evolution of, of costing, um, a lot of this was driven by factories, where they had direct material costs and direct labor costs. So of course, it sort of made sense to have this understanding of or acceptance that overheads were being driven by material and labor. We move into the service sector, where we're having a lot of um, overhead costs, um, we need, want to sort of spend time trying to really analyze those costs carefully. So, as you can imagine, many of the costs are, are overhead costs, and these need to be absorbed appropriately. Yes, we recognize this. That's correct. Yes, we do. Um, absorption costing can be used to link, provide, to help service providers understand the link between activities and cost activities and costs. This is not true. This is just not true. Really, in trying to link activities and costs, we need a better method referred to as activity-based costing. Right, and understand the link between activities will help managers reduce overheads. Yes, of course, that's the whole idea. We can understand that link and we can reduce those costs. Now, question 63 is one I want to quickly, I talk about it in the notes. Please re re um, re look at my revision videos. Um, I, I focus on this um, quite carefully. I look at it again here very briefly. Um, and what they're really trying to argue here, the key issue here is that period costs um, are treated differently when we compare marginal costing and absorption costing. This is the key issue here. Um, in marginal costing, period costs are always put through, always are put through the system, all of it, irrelevant of what is produced and what is sold, right? As opposed to in absorption costing, period costs are absorbed if you, when I say period costs, period costs within the factory, the fixed costs within the factory are absorbed into the product. And naturally, if a product is not sold, it moves into the next period. So given, depending on what system you're using, um, in if you have a scenario where um, you have, you've made a lot of products and you haven't sold them, if you like, um, you, you're, with absorption costing, it's okay, that will that that cost that fixed cost is absorbed into the product and it is because it's not sold it's closing inventory and it doesn't feature in your in your period and so that cost does not feature which means you will have higher profits 
you will have higher profits in that period. But of course, because it goes into the next period, it becomes a cost. And that closing inventory becomes opening inventory in the next period. And therefore, it becomes a cost. And as a result, you will have lower profits in the next period. Um, so, so just to show you what this question is saying very quickly, it's sort of asking us that when we sell, when we have a situation where we make and sell exactly the same thing, well, that's kind of fine because all the costs go through in exactly the same rate. So in that regard, please look at this question. It's page 108 of your... These are the costs here. These are the revenue. It's I think it's £10. My revision notes do show it. It's £10 if you like per unit so you have and you're selling you're making each I think it's six pounds um, as well so it's 150 times 10 it's 150 times 6 so you have these situations and then you have your full contribution fixed cost of 300 we're given that and you have a net profit of 200 and we see exactly the same thing with absorption costing um, 200 as well even though we're absorbing all the costs within the product so we'll see, we'll get to that question. I think that question is, in, if you look in question 63, I'll just jump to it very quickly here. The question says that where production equals sales, absorption costing, absorption costing produces equal profits. That should be the answer to marginal costing, right? Um, absorption costing, where production equals sales, absorption costing um, produces equal um profits so which of the statements is false well this is false actually so we've already answered this question this is actually false because at that where both of them are equal to each other where production equals sales um, profits are equal to each other but let's look at the other um, scenarios very quickly so which means that when we look at the next year let's look at the next year so the next or the next period in the next period what happened here was that we you sold 120 units but you made more under normal circumstances what would happen is the period costs relating to this period in absorption costing will be absorbed within the 150 we would only recognize of course 120 as cost of sales because that's what we sold and the extra 30 units will be carried into the next period with that period cost in there but in marginal costing, the full period cost will show up here and you would still only have the marginal cost of 120 units. So you'd have additional costs in here as a result of the full period costs being in here. And as a result with marginal costing, what you end up having is, if you like, less profits than you would with your absorption costing because those costs have been absorbed within closing inventory and that's been moved out of there into the next period so that's the that's the first issue here so the issue here is that when production is greater than revenue you have this closing inventory that's left and as a result with production being greater than um, revenue marginal costing profits are less than absorption costing profits and we see that um, over here and so what do we see in the next period well as a result of that um, because the um, absorption costing now has this additional cost and um, it basically has more cost in the next period you've only just pushed the cost back that's all you've done and it has to deal with that and therefore it'll have less profits coming out of the next period but with the period three you will have because you'll still have the same period cost as before you will have higher profits. I mean, ultimately, when you look at that together, you have 400. And when you look at this together, you have 400. We have, Nothing really has happened. We're just pushing costs back from one period into the next. So if we go back to the question here, the question tells us the differences in the level of profit reported are due to movements in inventory and inventory values. That's correct. When production exceeds when production exceeds sales, absorption costing produces higher profits than marginal costing. That is true. We agreed that. When sales exceeds, um, when sales exceeds production, marginal costing produces higher profits than absorption costing. That's true. We all, that's kind of, so this is, this is period three. This was period two. 
this was period one. So this, the, the, what they're saying here is wrong. In the examples I've just done, this kind of the, the way we'd look at we would look at we would look at this. So the answer there is D. Okay, let's push on quickly. I think we can do sixty four and sixty five. So sixty four and sixty five. Um, which of the following is false about absorption? Inventory carried forward um, between costing periods about absorption costing um, inventory carried forward between our value with fixed elements included true yes we've discussed this we, 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 we will absorb the fixed cost into the product and we will push those as we go along into the next period all non-production costs are charged um, to the time period in which um, they are incurred um, I'm going to have to use process elimination here. One second. All production costs are traced to the products. Yes, that is that is correct. Fixed production, fixed production, and non and fixed non-production overheads are treated as period costs. No, that's not true. So all non all non-production costs are charged. All non-production costs. Yes, that's correct. They charge at the time period. So the key point here is that. Um, it's only the fixed production cost that we absorb in the stock, right? Everything in the factory. Um, fixed non-production costs, if you like, are treated as period costs. Um, fix, fixed non-production costs are treated as period costs. Um, um, what's the word? Fixed production costs are absorbed into the product. So these are absorbed into the product, right? That's the key point here. So with absorption costing, we are absorbing all production costs into the product, right? We only treat non-production costs as, as, as period costs. Be careful here. When we talk about period costs, it's only it's for marginal costing. So it's marginal costing. Marginal costing treats... Um, production overheads as period costs, marginal costing. Marginal costing only considers direct material and direct labor as actual direct costs and discounts the rest as period costs, whereas absorption costing will take production overheads, overheads within the factory as absorbed within the product itself. So the answer, the, what is false here is D. B is true. Um, it, it is considered because they're non-production. They are charged at the time period in which they are in which they happen. And let's quickly, I think we can quickly pull out, we can deal with 65 as a good example of um, of, of absorption costing. Um, this, this business here, municipal um, authority uses activity-based costing to allocate the cost of payroll. So we're beginning to look at ABC. This is a good way to jump into it. It uses the number of employees as the cost driver. It uses the number of employees in each department. Total payroll is 325 a month what should be allocated monthly. So I'm interested in um, to housing. So housing is here. So I'm just going to very quickly. So what we have here is basically I want to allocate it based on ratio. It's kind of like ratios. So 70 divided by 15 plus 23 plus 54 plus 70 plus 104 times 3, 3, 2, 5. That's monthly. And I'm going to multiply this by 12. That's the key. That's the key issue here. Let's do that very quickly. Right, because that's activity based costing. I'm basically just allocating 15 plus 23 plus 54 plus 70 plus 104 is 266. So 70 divided by 266 times 3, 3, 2, 5. 70, 70 divided by 266 times 3, 3, 2, 5 is 875. This is 875. Per month and then I'm going to multiply this by 12 and that's 10,500 so my answer there is C 10,500 okay great so that was question um, question 60 to 65 great stuff